Good afternoon to everybody who is with us at the Harp channel on the Facebook at the moment or on the YouTube. I'm welcoming you again to a wonderful interview with our great guest today, Daphne Borden, who you certainly know. She is a really very famous harpist and very famous teacher at the Royal College of Music in London. But of course, I would like to introduce her a little bit more wider. So I would read a little of her biography. Daphne Borden, uh, is described by the music critic as of the times as a harpist who who has who is clean fresh playing and is he is really joy to hear she's a professor of harp at the royal college of music she studied at the royal college of music also and at the brussels royal conservatory where she was awarded the premier prix her teachers have included marisa robles and miriam floor her busy concert career has taken her all over the world. Her solo recitals have been warmly praised by critics and public alike. She has given innumerable able recitals and lecture recitals all over Great Britain and abroad and has played on radio and television. Her wide repertoire spans five centuries of music for the harp from all over the world. Much demand in demand as a soloist teacher, as an edu adjudicator. Daphne Borden's work takes her to many parts of the world. In addition to her busy career as a concert soloist, Daphne Borden is also a dedicated teacher. She greatly enjoys working with her gifted young students at the Royal College of Music in London. Her students have won numerous prizes in national and international competitions, and many of her former students are to be found playing in the leading orchestras all over the world. Daphne Borden has been professor at the Royal College of Music for 25 years and was also a professor at the Royal Academy of Music for 19 years. She's a member of the Board of Directors and the Cooperation of the World Harp Congress. This is a little introduction, but of course I'm sure that everybody's incredibly expecting and waiting and really to see our great guest today, our Daphne Borden. And I would like warmly to welcome her. Welcome Daphne. I'm so looking, really so looking forward to our uh, to our interview, and I'm so happy that you made your time to be with us today and uh, to share your your life and your experiences and all your stories uh, with all of us at the Harp Channel. I'm so proud and honored that you are with us. How are you these days? I'm fine, thank you very much, and it's a great honor to be interviewed by you. And thank you very much indeed for asking me. This is a huge huge pleasure and a great honor i'm really very very happy and uh, i'm so so looking forward because also as i can all already say now we have so beautiful pictures from you and it will be such a I mean, treasure really to share them with the with the public, and of course, as I know a little bit from from uh, like the people, all the stories that you are really from a fantastic family, and that your parents were artists as well, especially your father. Maybe you can a little introduce uh, everything to to the wider public now and say how did you come to the playing the harp and if you have been uh, somehow inspired by someone but how does it happen that you started to play the harp well i didn't start the harp very young unfortunately i wish i'd started much younger but i started playing the piano when i was very young my parents uh, they weren't they didn't play any instrument but they were very very musical and they adored music especially opera and ballet um, my father's father was a tremendous patron of the arts in Scotland. He uh, brought opera companies and various artists and things to Glasgow. And uh, my grandmother on my mother's side, she was a very good pianist. And from a very young age, I remember listening absolutely enthralled her playing the piano. She played all the Chopin waltzes and nocturnes and everything, and I was just thrilled by that. And uh, one of my father's brothers, he was a very good pianist, and he would have wanted to be a concert pianist, but unfortunately the war interrupted his studies. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the war, he decided not to go back 
to his piano studies and uh, went into business instead. Um, from a very, very young age, I was so lucky because my parents took me many, many times to the opera ballet. Um, there, my grandparents were very keen opera goers and from the age of six, mm -hmm. I went many, many times to the opera and the ballet and absolutely adored the music. I, I suppose what started me being keen on the harp was listening to all the lovely harp cadenzas in the ballet. And I remember all from the age of six, I was a mad keen ballet fan. And um, was, I still got lots of friends in the, in the ballet world. And um, my parents were, were portrait painters, uh, famous portrait painters. They painted a total of 12 portraits of the Queen from life, five of Prince Philip. <laughs> They painted the late Pope Pius and many, many people in the theatre, the business world, theatre, opera world. And um, I just had such a, a wonderful time being with all the opera people and going to the opera house. Um, the very first harp I came across, I'd had no experience of the harp firsthand, except listening to it in the orchestra. And uh, we were very, very great friends of Tito Gobbi, the great opera singer. And Tito had a daughter exactly the same age as me. Mm -hmm. And I think we got friendly from Cecilia and I were about seven years old. And Cecilia was bored stiff by opera and fascinated by painting. And I was pretty bored with painting and absolutely <laughs> loved opera. So whenever the Gobbies came to London or we went to Rome, we tended to swap families and uh, then both Cecilia and I were very happy because she could be with my parents in London uh, in the studio and watching them and I could be when we were in Rome I could be with the Gobbies going to rehearsals and listening to operas and um, Tito had the most beautiful harp in his music room in Rome and I'd never seen a harp before and I remember Cecilia who we were little she pulled this harp out from the corner where it was, we started looking at it and I was, I remember being horrified to see it had pedals. And I remember <laughs> thinking, my goodness me, oh, that's awful. How does anybody ever play this with all these pedals? And um, it, uh, Tito never played the harp, but it turned out that um, this had belonged to the person who had been the first harpist in the Rome Opera House. And she was an old lady and she'd gone into an old people's home and she was very hard up. And Tito was a friend of hers and he said, well, would it help you financially if I bought your harp from you? Because I would love to have it in my music room, just mm -hmm. as a, a beautiful thing to have. And she said, oh, yes, that would be great help. That would be wonderful. And um, so there it was. And I, I love to think of the in, incredible performances, because I suppose this harp must have been principal harp in the Rome opera, maybe in the 30s and 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And when you think of the performances it must have played in and the conductors and the stars on the opera stage. And I kept asking Tito, once I started to learn the harp, could I buy his harp? And he always said no. And several times if we went on holiday to Italy, and I remember once we went to Elba, and I would borrow his harp, I would drive to Rome. Every time I went there, it had no tuning key and it was always breaking its strings. And every time I went to Rome, I would tune it and bend the string, Ooh, and play it a bit. And um, then it just went back to its home in the corner in Tito's music room. And I kept asking him if I could buy it. And the answer was no, he wouldn't part with it. And once uh, we were going on holiday to Elba, and I was so fed up with going on holiday and, you know, you go to holiday and you swim and all, and all the time we were on holiday, I played this and practiced it and it was lovely. And um, then the idea was that on the way back, we were to go and spend some time with the Gobbies at their holiday home just outside Rome on the sea at Santa Severa. And I would give a recital to them and their friends. And we arrived at Santa Severa and the poor harp, having driven all the way from Elba and been on a ferry and then driven masses, hundreds of miles to Rome. I arrived there and it was like a wreck. 
about 12 strings were broken. Oh my. And, and it was just appalling. I thought, how can I possibly give a recital on this harp? But luckily, I managed to, by the next day, mend the strings and get it tuned, and everything was all right. That's amazing. And what kind of harp was it? Was and it the. Then I nagged at, nagged at Tito to send me mm -hmm. the most beautiful uh, French Erard Gothic uh, rosewood, dark mm -hmm. rosewood finish, mm -hmm. gold, gold column. And uh, then eventually, when Tito died, he very kindly left me this harp in his will. So now I. Wow. And it's one of the pictures of this beautiful Erard harp. It really is lovely, and I, I enjoy very much playing it and um, thinking and of all the performances the that this must have. Do you still have the heart at home? So, yes, oh, indeed, yes, it's right in front of me here. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful, it's a lovely instrument. So that has very happy memories. Absolutely, I can imagine. And you were so you were very connected with the Italy. And uh, when you were studying in in England, you were uh, the first student of Marisa Robles. Is it correct? Yes, I um I started studying with uh, Gwendolyn Mason, and mm -hmm. then when I went to the Royal College as a student, the harp teacher there was Mari Goosens mm -hmm. of the very very famous Goosens family. Mm -hmm. And um, then Marisa Robles came to this country and mm -hmm. I became her first student in this country and studied with her and she completely changed my way of playing. <laughs> and then after I went, after I graduated at the college, I went to the Brussels Royal Conservatoire mm -hmm. and studied with Mireille Fleur, who was, she was a fantastic teacher. She'd been a pupil of Henriette Renier. Mm -hmm. And she was a marvelous teacher. And I think I was the first British harpist to win a Premier Prix from Brussels. I think I was the first British person to do that. And That's then we went on from there. And, and then yeah. after, your, after your studies, you returned to London, right? Yes. I mm -hmm. came back to London after that. And um, very shortly after I got back, um, I got the most amazing phone call from Buckingham Palace from the Queen's private secretary to say that the Queen had heard that I'd been the first British harpist to win the Premier Prix in Brussels and she'd love to hear me play. Would I go and play to her one day? Wow! So that was a tremendous honour. So I did and I've, I've played several times for her in, you know, in, in private. It's been wonderful because my, my parents, as I say, they've painted 12 portraits of the Queen that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And you know, when I saw, uh, of course, with the picture of yours, you were not you were, but at that time, as a child or as a as a young lady, you were so gorgeous. Uh, you were really like a royal person. You you and I, if I may, I will just show one of the photos from that. Of course, we. Um, this is the the one of of that. What I get, I found it on the internet. It's from Marisa Robles. She found it also, so she put it on the web. And I just was really impressed by all these these photos. It's it's just gorgeous. You are really like a queen. You are absolutely marvelous. It's fantastic. All these these gorgeous photos. And of course, that was a long time ago. Uh, there are many of uh, these like. Yeah, this is the one in the bigger, and here's also the yeah, I, 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 photo of the big one. It's really amazing, yes. amazing. Yeah, so uh, you played the piano before, right? Yes, I, I did. I played the piano from a very young age, about four or five. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. grandmother started teaching me. Then I had proper lessons when I was, from I suppose, the age of six or so. Mm -hmm. And I wrote my, I thought I had a different teacher from the age of nine, uh, who was also a teacher at the Royal College. And um, she said that she thought I was going to be a concert pianist, but I think she was deluding herself. I think there's, there's no way I had the ability to be a concert pianist, not at all. But then as soon as I started playing the harp, I thought, ah, oh, mm -hmm. this, is, this mm -hmm. is something completely different. 
But I oh, think that if you have the basics on the piano, it's such a help for the harpist because first of all, you get used to have the coordination of two hands. You you are used to read the same score. And I think it's a big help for also imagination because the piano, of course, has bigger repertoire or at that time, certainly they had. And it's probably a big help for, for the start. Or did you feel it this way? Yes, but I got very confused because as soon as I took to the harp, I took to the harp. I think so easily but when mm -hmm. I started when I played the piano I couldn't get used to the the hands being in the opposite direction and I couldn't cope with the black notes and the white notes I wanted to move my feet instead of playing the black notes and even though I played the piano for years and years mm -hmm. as soon as I started playing the harp I just it was my second study at college you had to mm -hmm. have two two instruments first and second study in those days and my piano playing just went downhill i think from that I black, the white notes i always when i saw black notes needed my, my feet stuff <laughs> i think that we all experience this this stories when we are playing the harp and then we want to play the piano anytime we see any sharps on bees we are just pushing the pedals it's absolutely like confusion of our of our job and uh, Daphne have yeah. you ever because you mentioned that you did not like the painting because you had it all over about uh, at home have you never yeah. thought about to be a painter you did you no, never no, no. I have no no talent at all in drawing or painting none whatsoever <laughs> Oh, that's a pity because I think that this is also a part of the of the uh, of the um, art. And if you were so much surrounded by such a fantastic painters who were really the asked painter for making the portraits of the royal family, it's a, such an inspiration. You have never even tried it. Oh, I tried, yes, but <laughs> I didn't. It wasn't something I, I could do at all. Mm -hmm. no, and no, your no. your sisters or siblings? No, this did you have siblings? Oh, sorry, go on. Did you have any siblings who who was going to the way of your of your parents? No, no, I don't have any brothers or sisters. Mm -hmm. But it's great that you still stayed in the art art, so that you went through through the art and that you you were doing the the uh, the harp and the music. And when you did this this very special concert for the royal family. Did something happen after that you could play it regularly for the family or what was the continuation of this experience? Um, yes, well, qu quite often the, the, the Queen, especially when, if my, when my parents had sittings with her because uh, one was in one of my father's obituaries, one of the critics worked out that my parents must have spent over a hundred hours sort of one-to-one -one in the company of the Queen because it was a... 10 or 12 portraits with about 10 sittings each. Mm -hmm. You know, they spent a lot of time with her. And she loved listening to the harp. She liked the harp very much. And she quite often asked if I would like to come and play. Mm -hmm. And then Prince Charles heard that I'd been playing for his mother. And he said, if he asked me very nicely, would I come and play for him? So I said, I'd be delighted to come and play for him. <laughs> and. Um, then I started telling Prince Charles about how in the old days, in Victoria's time and uh, the time of Edward VII and Queen Victoria, there had been a, a royal harpist. There, there was a position mm -hmm. of the royal harpist and he must have taken this on board. And then he, he decided to appoint and make me renew the appointment and make it a royal harpist. So the first person, he appointed was Catherine Finch, and she became the first harpist to the mm -hmm. Prince of Wales in mm -hmm. this, you know, in this day and age. So I think that was because I'd been telling the Prince of Wales all about this Thomas, who caught harpist to Queen Victoria and caught harpist to Edward the Seventh. That's amazing. That's really thanks to you and thanks. That's we, we all should thank, especially the the British harpist who can become the the royal harpist. Who is now the royal harpist at these days? In these days, the last one I think was Hannah Stone, or oh, no, Anne Anne Denholm. Anne Denholm is now the harpist, I think. But you have to be Welsh. 
Mm -hmm. I know, I know. And it's all a uh, limited time, right? It's two years or how long they can be, the Royal Heart? It's either two years or three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's getting more strict, I think, because I understand now that when you're interviewed for the job, half the interview has to be in Welsh. I so see. you really have to be Welsh. Mm -hmm. Strictly. Yeah. <laughs> strictly. Yeah, when you say strictly. When we were talking about your father, you sent me some of the pictures and uh, the painting. And I don't know if it's your father, this one. Can you just tell me a little bit? Is it your father? No, that, that was my late husband. It was uh, your that's a, that's My husband. And that, my um, mother did that very lovely drawing of him. Wow. It's a, a drawing in sanguine chalk, which my mother did of my husband. That's fantastic, because I, of course, didn't know exactly who who painted it. And I found on the Internet um, the picture. Just uh, wait a minute. I have to find it, which I know it's also in the Royal College of Music, because I'm so proud to say that I'm also your colleague. So when I, I am at, at the school, I see these pictures there on the wall and I heard that it's from your father. Is that right that he painted these pictures? Well, my, 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 they were a team. My, they worked together. And my my mother did probably a lot more of the work than my father did. Oh, I see. So okay. All, all all the portraits are very wow. Painted. So, for example, this one is it your mother's portrait? She did it. Uh, it's a Bowden. My my both my parents did it jointly. That that um, that one I think that that hangs in in Stirling Castle in Scotland. That that's the one I think is in the robes of the Order of the Thistle. And it hangs in Stirling Castle. Mm -hmm. I think there are five, five Bowdens hanging on the wall in Stirling Castle. It's amazing. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. It's really, it's like a picture. It's amazing. It's super beautiful. So I just, I just wanted to be sure because this I found on the internet and I have not been yeah. sure totally who who did it. So I just wanted to be clear with this. And just tell me, because you are really a very patient teacher, where did you really decide to be accept the really solos? Because you played a lot of solo concerts. How did you decide to start to be a teacher also? Well, I always said at the beginning, no, no, I don't, I don't want to teach. No way do I want to teach. Mm -hmm. I just want to play. And, um, but very soon after I... Quite soon after, after I got back from Brussels, the junior department of the Royal College of Music asked me if I would go and teach there. And I was, I wasn't sure, but I, I decided yes. And it's been wonderful. It's, um, it's almost 50 years now. I'm approaching my 50th anniversary wow. of being there. And I've, I've had some wonderful pupils there. I mean, it's, Fantastic, because if they're very gifted, they can start at the age of eight mm -hmm. and they go on all the way until they leave school. And I've had some wonderful pupils there now who are you know, really at the top of their profession and winning international competitions like um, Lucy Wakeford, who was the, in oh, a long time ago, when she was only 16, she won the second prize in Israel. Mm -hmm. And she was the youngest harpist ever to win a prize in Israel then. And uh, Daniel de Frey and Cecilia and um, Juliana Meischloff and all these fantastic, fantastic pupils I've started from a very, very young age. And the, the junior department of the college is, is amazing. It really mm -hmm. is. It functions on a Saturday mm -hmm. and it's, it's a wonderful institution and I really enjoy teaching there. And then if the pupils want to go on to the senior college, they, they can do that. But the junior department is very, very, very special. So um, I taught at the junior department for a long time. I, I taught a lot of private pupils. And um, oddly enough, I became a professor at the Royal Academy of Music before I became a professor at the Royal College of Music. And then there was a, a change of director at the Royal College. Uh, Dame Janet Ritterman became the director. And I think she thought it was a bit odd that I was professor at the junior department and at the Royal Academy, but not at the Royal College. So she asked me if I'd like to become a professor at the Royal College, mm -hmm. which I was very honoured and delighted to, to accept. 
and I've had some very, very fine pupils there. I really enjoy teaching there. As you know, it's a wonderful establishment. Absolutely. Uh, there's, a lovely, there's a lovely Bowden portrait of the Queen Mother mm -hmm. on the staircase as you go in the front door. And um, Indeed. I've, I've really had some fantastic pupils down the years. I'm very, 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 feel very honoured to have, have taught them. Oh, that's that's a lovely picture. That's um, I don't know. I don't know if the, if I don't think I think we're cutting the Queen Mother's head off. Uh huh. Can can you bring it down a bit? It's not possible. It's just like this. But the people who has bigger screen, they can really see it. See it really oh, clear. Yes. At the moment, the Queen Mother has no head. And um, yes, that was my wonderful pupil, Daniel De Fry. Mm -hmm. I taught Daniel since he was five years old. And wow. then he came to, he went to the Purcell School with me, and then he came to the Senior Royal College, and he was the winner of the Tagore Gold Medal. Every year they have a presentation of the Tagore Gold Medal, which goes to the, the most outstanding student of the year. Wow. And it's an astonishing thing, I think, for a harpist to win this. Mm -hmm. think they're against all the pianists, cellists, violinists, everything yes. else at the college. So at the um, graduation day, I was astounded when they said, and we're going to announce the winner of the Tagore Gold Medal. And this year it's going to a harpist, Daniel DeFry. That's so fun. It was amazing. I had no idea it was going to be announced like that. Daniel had no idea either. Mm -hmm. And we were mm -hmm. both astonished. And then the day that picture was taken, it was lovely because um, Prince Charles comes once a year and the senior prizes are presented by him. Mm -hmm. So Daniel was presented with the Tagore gold medal by Prince Charles. Wow. And then afterwards, uh, he and I were photographed in front of my parents' portrait of the Queen Mother. Mm -hmm. So that's a lovely picture to have. That's one because here's also the picture which I showed already before. It's with Prince Charles. Okay. Yes, that, that was the day I was presented uh, with my fellowship at the college. Mm -hmm. I was had the great honour to be a, made a fellow of the Royal College, and that was presented by Prince Charles. That's and that great. actually was that was just a few days after. Uh, We'd been praying at Buckingham Palace. We had the wonderful opportunity. I had a wonderful sextet at the college, really uh -huh. fantastic sextet. They were brilliant. And uh, we were invited to play at um, Prince Charles's birthday party mm -hmm. at Buckingham Palace. And we gave an, an hour's recital in, in chopped up in bits, sort of 15 minute sections. Wow. And the Queen, the Queen gave the very nice instructions that when we weren't playing, mm -hmm. we were to be treated as guests. So we had a, a lovely evening. And That's just about is it, four I days know. after that, the, the, the prince came to the college to present me with the fellowship. Beautiful. Because I have here also the picture. Is it that picture from that six, sextet of the harp? Oh, yes. That, that, um, that's just a verse rehearsing. They, they were all very, yes, these are the girls. They were beautifully dressed then. We've got, well, we've got Sally Price. Mm -hmm. uh, who's now, she's doing brilliant. Triona Marshall, who's in Ireland. Uh, another Irish girl on the left. We have a girl from from Belgium there. And Anthea Mather and Keziah Thomas. Yes, that's, that, that picture was taken in the college during during a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we should have some pictures of the, you know, of the actual concert in the in the in Buckingham Palace but I, I don't seem to have any which I'm sad about yeah it's at that moment of course we don't think about making the pictures unless someone else does it for us and we have yes, different sorry. different minds some uh, at that moment yes. I just want to also tell you we have people of course who are with us on the on the during this interview and they are so kindly writing you messages so you can also see them now here I would just like to share them with you so that you can see them uh, Sarah Je Jennifer, I think it's her name. Sarah, she's Sarah, 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 Sarah,
She's going to be also our guest now. Uh, it's a surprise because you might have not seen, but we are, I'm doing on the Harp channel every day the quizzes. And these uh, winners of find, uh, making the correct answer of the quiz, they have the option to choose the guest who they want to ask live questions. And J Sarah oh. Julie was the one who won this, this quiz. So she, is now with us on the screen and I will bring her in to ask you questions which she has prepared. So if you allow me, I would like to welcome Sarah Julia to be, be with us. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Daphne. Hi, Jana. It's lovely to see you and thank you very much for coming in. So very precise on time, as I asked you, it's wonderful to, that you manage everything, all the connection by yourself. I'm really very, very thankful for that and so happy to see you. And I will now leave you with our great guest, Daphne, together on the screen. And you are allowed to ask her two questions if you have. So I will be very happy to listen to them. Oh, gosh. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Daphne. Hi, how are you? Oh, hello, Sarah Juliet. Really Hi, sorry, this well. isn't a very good um, signal. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, can I you just wanted me? to ask you, um, really, when you were learning, who were the harpists or teachers that sort of you sort of thought, oh, I'd really like to either have a lesson or that sort of encouraged you or, or sort of... Um, I Yeah, I can't think, just... Uh, yes, yeah, basically to encourage you um and that you aspired to sort of learn from or have you learned from the teachers you wanted to learn from yes uh, definitely the um i think the two teachers who have inspired me most were marisa robles who came to england when i was just not hadn't been studying the harp very long and um she was absolutely amazing she was a complete inspiration to me which is a wonderful, wonderful teacher. And then uh, Mireille Fleur in Brussels, she was an amazing teacher, rather an eccentric lady, but a marvelous teacher. And um, I learned a tremendous amount from, from both of these teachers, eternally grateful to them. Um, and they're, they're my, my main, the main people that I have studied with. If, and is that there anybody that you think, oh, if you'd like to go back to, um, you know, anybody, any harpist, any teacher, is there anybody that you think, gosh, I would love to have had an opportunity for one lesson or to have met that person? Well, when I was young, before I was very much advanced at playing the harp, <clears throat> I was very lucky. I um, had an introduction to Marcel Grandjeanie and had the honour of being invited to his house for tea one afternoon. And um, he, I suppose he's one of the people I admire most in the heart world. I would have loved to have had some lessons from him. But when I met him, I wasn't nearly advanced enough to be able to have asked for a lesson from him. I wouldn't have dared. Um, I suppose late, I, I, would, I would very much like to have studied with Catherine Michel. I think she's a fantastic teacher today. Um, I would love to have studied with her. I will interrupt. She has a birthday today, Katrin Michel. Also, um, Suzanne no. McDonald is an absolutely inspiring teacher. There are many. Um, I was very honored to be a, a friend of um, and have met Nicanor Zabaleta, but I never had any lessons from him. I'm sure it would have been marvelous to have had some lessons from Zabaleta. But unfortunately, I, I probably wasn't at an advanced enough stage when I was seeing quite a lot of him. But those are my, I suppose the main heroes are, are the pastor Grand Jenny and Zabaleta. I know it's difficult sometimes answer? putting you on a spot on something like that. Uh, because I think everybody, when they're learning, they always want to sort of think, oh, I, I'd love to see that person or that person, how they play. You know, as, we, as students, when you're learning, you get inspired by teachers, by other harpists. You hear of other mm. people. I mean, I think um, a, a name that I would have loved to, um, and a person I would have loved to have met, would have been Vera Dulaba. I always heard about her, but never actually met her. So there's always 
somebody that one as yeah. aspires to sort of meet or learn from or just even yeah. one lesson or something, yeah. you know. Now, I was lucky enough to meet Vera Dulova a couple of times. She was a, a wonderful harpist. Marvellous. Oh, you were lucky? <laughs> But I think Jana, power, Jana was saying earlier about oh. um, you playing, and I remember going to see you at the Wigmore Hall um, and oh, yeah. being fascinated. Um, A, you were stunning. B, you had the most beautiful dress. And C, I, I was fascinated by your feet on the harp and these pedals <laughs> and how you managed to change the pedals in that long dress. So, yes, <laughs> uh, wonderful memory there. <laughs> Oh gosh, yes. Yes. So. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Really, it's okay. so awesome. I don't know. Okay. Is there any other question you would like to ask? Uh, no, I, I, I know. It's been lovely to speak to Daphne. It's been lovely to see her. It's been a long time. I'm so happy, really, that it functions everything. I, and congratulate you again once more that you got this prize, that you could be with us. And I hope anytime, if you would like to continue, you are welcome to, to look at the Harp Channel quizzes. And of course, oh, I will do. Again. Thank you, Jana. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Bye, Daphne. To see it's amazing to see Sarah Juliet again because. I knew her, her grandmother was a very famous harpist, as mm -hmm. you probably know, Tina Bonifacio. Of who course. Was a great friend of mine. Of course. And uh, she, was, she, was a, she was a principal harpist uh, with Sir Thomas Beecham. And uh, I've known Sarah Juliet since she was a very little girl. And she was actually a principal bridesmaid at my wedding, which Sarah Juliet may not remember. I don't know if she'll remember that. Oh, that's so sweet. I know that she it's wrote. Very, it's a small world. Absolutely. My principal, my principal <laughs> bridesmaid coming on to the interview, you see. This is really so lovely. All these, these kind of really coincidences of meeting the people because she also wrote me and sent me the pictures about her grandmother. And of course, it is right. lovely to see all these historical experiences and memories. It's just beautiful. Yeah. And of course, mainly if you know each other so long and if there are stories between two of you also, I'm so pleased that it worked out today <laughs> that you could have met at least live together. Yeah, definitely. As I started, we have also, of course, many, many already greetings. I would just like to show them to you and, of course, to the public so that you see we have from uh, Ukraine, Veronika Lemishenko is saying hello to you. She, uh, here is with Inge Kavalin Ro. I think that she's your student because she writes. It's very exciting yes. for the interview with my wonderful teacher. And we have also from Yekaterina Zuraliova, sorry for, for mistake. Good evening. Thank you very much for a great channel and this wonderful opportunity to meet well-known harpists. I'm thankful for being with us. Thank you very much for these words. I'm very pleased, of course, to welcome such wonderful guests. And Anna Verkolhanseva from Vienna, the Russian harpist greetings to you both. Yes. So nice to see you, dear Daphne. So, and we have yeah, also from Andra Malia. Lovely to see you both. Greetings from Dublin. So, greetings to everybody as well, of course. And we have Geraldine McMahon. Hello, Daphne and Yana from Affairs of the Harp. And we have also from Iman. Hello, Daphne. It's wonderful from Iman. Yamal, Iman. <laughs> and Iman and Jamal, they are, the Iman is a wonderful violinist mm -hmm. and she's at the junior department of the college at the moment and she has a brother, Jamal, who is, I think he's 12. He is a fantastic harpist and they're playing many, they play as a duo also mm -hmm. and they've just sent me this morning a link of a 50 minute recital they have just done for something and I've only been able to listen to about five minutes of it so far and I'm hoping to listen to the whole thing this evening. They're an amazing duo and Jamal is only 12 years old. Fantastic. And, uh, he's an astonishing wow. harpist. You must, I might give you this link and uh, maybe you can come one day and hear Jamal play when we're back in business again in the college after the lockdown. You Fantastic. Might be able to come and hear them. Yeah, it would be lovely to have that. I can. 
they're an amazing duo and Jamal and his his sister's a fantastic violinist mm -hmm. she's I think 15 now and Jamal mm -hmm. at 12 is a wonderful harpist that's fantastic Absolutely. if you have any if you have the link of course I would be pleased to even share it with the public so I can post it on the harp channel so it would be really okay, lovely. Okay. yeah of course okay. and we have of course I'm so pleased that also Marisa Robles is with us today so she also greet us both and uh, so she's very proud for of Daphne and wonderful teacher and very interesting person and that she thanks me for this interview and I am of course very honored and very very pleased that we have our guest today Daphne together with us and we have also from Kezi and Thomas also she she was telling the greetings when Sarah was there and then it's of course here also Daphne you are looking beautiful and that's absolutely true you look really gorgeous and here is also a greetings from from uh, CJ to Marisa yeah so uh, Daphne we will of course have more greetings and maybe there will be some questions which I would love of course to give opportunity to everybody if you would like you can write the questions and I will of course show it to our guests today so we can answer them immediately and uh, as I would be really interested, uh, what was your, um, did you ever thought about to play in the orchestra also? Or it has never been your your target to, to try it or to play there? I did, I did a lot of orchestral playing, of course, when I was a student at the college. Mm -hmm. And thinking back over it, I'm so lucky, we, I, you doesn't really realize at the time how lucky you are, but for instance, I played under Sir Adrian Bolt and Sir Malcolm Sargent and Sir Charles Groves and Rudolf Schwartz mm -hmm. and George Schulte. All these, all these things while wow. I was a student at the college. It was just, mm -hmm. I don't think you appreciate it at the time as much as you do later, perhaps. Um, yes, I did you know, quite a lot of orchestral playing afterwards, of, of course, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of freelance work, a lot of playing in various orchestras, but the, I was more interested in, in solo playing. I loved giving lecture recitals. That was one mm -hmm. of my favorite things, uh, giving lecture recitals about the harp. And I did used to do quite a lot of recitals uh, of poetry and prose and music. I was honored to do programs with Dame Judi Dench mm -hmm. and uh, with Virginia McKenna who's a wonderful comment if you've heard of her she's a great conservationist have you seen the film born free no about the lioness and she's a wonderful film actress mm -hmm. and uh, we've done quite a lot of recitals together for charity to raise funds for wildlife and conservation and things like that so yes but my, my main work has been in as, as a solo player Mm -hmm. I, would, I would very, I, I regret I didn't do more orchestra. Ke I would have loved when I thought, when I was younger. I thought the one job I really wanted was to get the job at the Royal Opera House at Covent mm -hmm. Garden. And now, in a way, I I feel it's almost, I'm perhaps the mother or the grandmother because um, the two harpists there are Lucy Wakeford and Emma Granger, who were both students of mine, yes. and they're they're the two harpists now. And I keep thinking, well. That was a job I wanted years and even, you know, even before I even probably learned, I think when I started, probably had my first lesson. I said, right, and this is my first lesson. I want to be a harpist at Covent Garden. Of so, course, as you, as you were so inspired by the ballet as a child, of course, I can understand that you wanted to continue to be still together with this kind of music yeah. and play it by yourself. And then I think what really pushed me was, when um, some years later uh, an Italian opera company came and to London and gave several performances of Lucia di Lammermoor mm -hmm. and we went to every performance and the fantastic harp cadenza in that and I was thrilled by this I thought oh that's <laughs> what I want to play that's what I, I want to play the harp and I want to play that and I want to play for an opera orchestra and that was my big, big, big ambition when I was a child. And have you played it later on? Yes, yes. 
Yes, many times with various operas. Yes, I, I love that. And then you can go home at the first interval. And Lucia. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's a very nice part. You you present yourself the way how the harp should be presented, and then you are free. That's really yeah. lovely. Yeah. And because you, you were really surrounded by so many wonderful people, do you have really memory of someone very famous who was uh, very close by you and you spent many times with that person and you can maybe share some of the memories from your time to being together, I don't know, conductors or singer or even painters yeah. or the royal family? I suppose that among our very greatest uh, friends were Tito Gobi, the opera singer whose harp I now have. And um, he was a very, very, very close friend of my parents. In fact, my father even appointed him to be my, my legal guardian if anything happened to my parents and they were killed. Um, my father appointed him to be my guardian. Mm. And his brother-in-law, the wonderful bass Boris Christoph. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Boris Christoph, the bass? He and mm -hmm. Tito Gobi were brothers-in-law and mm -hmm. they were very, very close friends too. And we, oh, we, in, in those days, you know, we went to so many opera performances and when Boris and Tito came to London, we went to every performance they were giving. Mm -hmm. And we just spent, spent so much time together. It was, it was wonderful. Can't afford to go to the opera anymore. It's, it's too expensive to go to Covent Garden. It costs a fortune to get a seat there. That's in, those true. Days, mm -hmm. in those days, it was possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And where did you spend your holidays during your childhood? Have you been in London based or did you go also? Because uh, as your parents, for those who came a little bit later, to re only to repeat, your parents were painters. So and as, as far as I know that uh, my also uh, relatives were also painters and I know that they like always to go to the nature and to be inspired by the nature. How was it with your family? Yes, we my parents used to love to go and spend the summer holidays in Cornwall and mm -hmm. we would rent a cottage there and they would rent a studio and take some of their work down. It was difficult to limit it what they could take because so many of all the official portraits are often very big mm -hmm. and but they would take slightly smaller things that they could work on. My mother used to do some landscapes Mm -hmm. um, and we would go down there for probably two months every summer and have a lovely time and I, I could go to the beach and my parents would, would be working in a, we rented a lovely little cottage mm -hmm. dives, and uh, they, they managed to hire an artist studio that they could go to every day and work and it was, we spent the holidays there when I was a child, it was lovely. Como, is it, is it in, in Finland? Or is it in in English England somewhere, Kumo? Because I know Kumo is in also in Finland, if I am right. Sorry, what's in Finland? No, no, no. The 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 city where you were going to, you said Kumo, or what? What was the name of the city you okay, said? Uh, uh, Cornwall. So Cornwall. Okay. I, in the south of England. Okay, okay, so that was yeah, uh, differently. Okay, okay, so that's nice. So it was near to the seaside, of course, as you said, so that yeah. you could have been. Mm -hmm. And did you travel with your heart as well, or did you took totally free for the holidays? Um, I was I was pretty free for the holidays. We spent all my holidays riding horses, and because my great love, apart from playing the harp, is riding horses. I can I can show that it's we have a proof here. <laughs> Ah, oh, that, that's a very special photograph because I had a beautiful, beautiful grey horse called Shadow, but that's, again, I've, I don't know if anybody can, I've, I've lost, I've lost my head and shoulders there, but oh. um, it's, um, that was a tremendous honour. That picture was taken at, in Jordan, in mm -hmm. the dead, near the Dead Sea, and that is the perfect personal white stallion belonging to King Hussein of Jordan, which I was given the enormous honour of being allowed to ride. And that, wow. that was taken at the King's Winter Palace in Jordan. I think it's you awesome. probably have a picture there. Of I, have also, 
this one okay. yes that yes that that's my own lovely lovely horse she was called shadow she lived to be 30 years old so she was amazing wow so this one you had at home in london yes we kept her at various places we kept her at the ham polo club for a long time and i used to try to go out very early in the mornings and ride her and get back in time to practice mm -hmm. and she was she was wonderful i, ha I had her Oh, I had her from, oh, from being 13 years old, I think, when I was 13, oh. I got Shadow. Mm -hmm. Have you? Day when she died. And you you played the harp before that, or uh, oh, you yes. guess, Yeah, so you were not afraid of, of riding the horse when you were a harpist? No, I used to make it a rule not to go riding on the same day I had a concert. In case my fingers were too stiff, because oh. she was she was very she was a very naughty horse. <laughs> and I fell off her very many times. Beautiful she, one. She Absolutely. Was cool. but and no, I mean you can much mm -hmm. more likely to hurt yourself falling over than. But it has never happened that you fall. It has never happened that you fall down. Oh, hundreds, hundreds of times. Really? Yes. You ride a horse, you fall. Many, many, many times I've fallen off countless times. <laughs> but nothing happened, hopefully. Nothing happened yeah. that you would broke break anything. Good. Thanks no. God. But, yeah. but if but you can fall anytime if you remember when we were both on the jury in yeah. Israel last time in Acre in Acre. Exactly. I was on the jury with two black eyes when I fell over. We have yes. here the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can see this. No. Right Two black eyes, and I thought I had a broken nose also because I fell in the hole in the street. Mm, <laughs> I remember. Oh, my. But except the horses, have you had also some other hobby as a child? My my great passion as a child was wildlife. And I, ever since the age of about 10 or 11, I, I longed to go to Africa. I longed to go and see wild animals elephants lions i long to go to the serengeti or to the ngora Gora crater or to kenya or to anywhere and as you can see in the photograph on the right i've succeeded in doing that now and that's i i have many times been to kenya i love going to the elephant watch camp mm -hmm. and the elephant research station in kenya and the elephants trust you so much from there that they come right up to the vehicle, completely up close. I've got lovely, I've got pictures of an elephant's tongue, I've got pictures of an elephant's toenails, wow. got pictures of an elephant's eye. And then I've got my own wildlife in the garden. The photograph on the left mm -hmm. is my very special Robin who comes to my hand for some cheese. Robins absolutely love cheese. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can get them to come onto my hand if I'm patient. And that and was a very special one. I just went into the garden and whistled and he was there immediately. Uh-huh. And is you have it in London? Yes. Oh. The, the robin, not, not the elephant. That's, of course, yeah. Because it, it's, these two photos were together. I so said, like, well, maybe if I'm right, then the elephant is certainly not in London. <laughs> yeah, sure. no, the, the, elephant, the elephant doesn't live in London. I had an amazing... <laughs> One, one night I had the most extraordinary dream that I looked, I woke up in the morning and looked out of my bedroom window and there were three elephants in the garden. Oh. And I thought, my God, the, the, how terrible, the damage they're going to do to the garden. They're going to destroy the lawn. They're going to destroy the flowers. And then I woke up and it was a dream. Thanks God, fortunately, it was only the dream. <laughs> but I love going to Kenya and with any luck, at this particular camp I like, you know, you often I, I hardly want to go to sleep because an elephant can come right up to your tent in the middle of the night. And it's wonderful. <laughs> That's gorgeous. So did you did you travel often to Africa or somewhere where yeah. you really can find the, the elephants in the nature? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so yes, I I save up all my money to be able to afford to go back there. And, um, and did you go to Thailand? Because in Thailand they have really the, uh, the, and the elephants everywhere. You can ride them as well. Did you ever go there? 
No, I've never been to Thailand. That that's um, the Asian elephants. I see. It's possible to train the in Africa. They have the African elephants, which mm -hmm. are very yeah, very wild. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. An African elephant. Indeed. But, no, I've never been to Thailand. I'd love to go there. Uh huh. And when you were in Africa, have you ride the elephant, or did you only go to no, close? No. no, 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 no. You can't. No, certainly don't. They're completely. They're completely wild. <laughs> you go in the land rover and watch them from from very close, very very close. Mm -hmm. It's watch amazing. Them. Absolutely wild. That's great experience and really nice, actually, a really nice passion of yours to to have this kind of uh, for the animals of, of that kind of animals. It's really wonderful. Right. But no tigers. I hope no tigers. No, no, uh, these kind of really white, white animals. Or did you ever met any of those? Oh, yes. You, you see, there are no tigers in Africa, but you, you see lots of lions and leopards mm -hmm. and... Uh, Yes, fantastic, everything. Yes, I, I just love seeing all of them. Oh, that's amazing. And of course, you got married later, as I already showed the picture of your husband, which is a painted yes. picture of your mother, which she made it for for you. Yes. And uh, so it's, you want also... It's a drawing. It's a drawing in sanguine chalk. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. Yes. And was yes. he also an artist? Or is he also an um, artist? No, um, this is a very sad day for me today because it's the anniversary of my husband's death. So it's quite sad. Oh, we were only married for three years oh and he died. God. And um, no, he, he wasn't, he, he wasn't, uh, uh, he loved music very much, but he was an amazing man. He was an author and he was also a very wonderful healer. Mm -hmm. And I, I met him when I'd heard an interview with him on the radio and my horse was very sick and I thought I was going to have to have her destroyed because she'd torn her Achilles tendon and she'd had operations on it from the best vet in the country. And I heard an interview on the radio with Gordon and I have never in my life before written to anybody care of the BBC But I wrote to him and said, would you come and look at my horse? And he did. And I didn't know what to expect. I thought, well, yes, it's crazy if the best vet in the country operates on her and can't do anything for her. What's this man going to do? But um, he cured her. Amazing. She was completely better. Oh, I was able to run, oh, I was this... able to run again. I get, I got, I am really so impressed. I get so often during the inter interviews the goosebumps, and this is exactly <laughs> now when you said that it immediately comes. It's amazing. That's a fantastic story. Oh. Well, it was extraordinary because I hadn't told the stables that I was bringing a healer. So I didn't honestly know what to expect. I thought, well, mm. you know, I hadn't seen him. I'd only heard him on the radio. I thought, well, you know, maybe he'll be something like the the Maharishi. Maybe he'll be in a, a loincloth. Maybe he'll start conjuring up spells or invoking spirits or something. And but he was a very ordinary looking man. Have you seen a picture of him? And he came to Shadow. And I thought, well, Shadow might not like him because she didn't like men very much. But he went in beside her and he ran his hands over her. And he said, well, I don't know. I hope perhaps I can help her. And he said, if I can do anything, hopefully in about four weeks, she should be okay, and mm -hmm. you'll be able to ride her. And I thought, well, that's nonsense, because the, the top surgeon has operated on her, says, well, mm -hmm. the best you can hope for is after six months, <laughs> perhaps you can put on her back. That's, that's my mother's painting of shadow. My mm -hmm. mother did this beautiful, beautiful painting of shadow. She was so beautiful. And um, after Gordon's visit, two days after his visit, I went to the stables. And the girl who was looking after her, I led, I led Shadow out of her box. And the trouble was that every time she took a step, you would see behind the Achilles tendon clipped off the joint on the back leg and you could see it come off mm -hmm. and go back on again. And, uh, and she had a terrible cough. And two days after Gordon had been, 
I went to the stables and uh, the girl who looked after her said, it's, it's funny today, Daphne. She said, you know, I, she had no idea if somebody had been to see Shadow. And she said, uh, usually when I come in, Shadow, the first thing I hear is Shadow coughing. And she coughs and she coughs and she coughs. And it's horrible. But he said, today I came in and she hasn't coughed once. She mm -hmm. hasn't coughed at all. And I thought, well, that's very extraordinary. So I took her out for a walk, leading her, and I brought her back. She was coughing a bit by then. But then two days after that, I went back again to take her out for a walk. And I led her out of her box through the yard. And the girl was following me. And she said, oh, stop, stop. She said, wait a minute. You, I'll lead Shadow. You walk behind and tell me what you see on that leg. So I walked behind. And there was no movement from the tendon. It had stopped moving. She said, she said, I just didn't believe it. She said, I, I, I was walking behind and I thought, well, I can't see the tendon moving. And the, the stables, they had no idea I'd taken Gordon to see her. So that was extraordinary. It's a miracle. He was really um, a, a magic. He was a magic. Yes, he, he, he was amazing with humans, with people's backs. People used to come from all over the world mm -hmm. to consult him about bad backs, bad knees, mm -hmm. frozen shoulders, anything. And then two years later, we got married. <laughs> Thanks to my horse. That's a really destiny. That's absolutely a fairy tale. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, and he took care of your of your horse even after. Yes. Yes. Yes, but he'd cured her already. So he took care of me when I got sore shoulders playing the harp or anything like that. He was a very useful person to have around. He was amazing. He was just amazing. He couldn't account for this gift he had. It was just just a gift mm -hmm. that he had. He could he could cure people with bad backs, dislocated knees, frozen shoulders, all kinds of things. And he was a tremendous, he, he could help a lot of animals. He had a lot of dogs mm -hmm. and horses as patients. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. That's, that's something what we actually don't still know what is it, but it's something what is gifted really from above to special people only. And, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. and I'm so sorry for your loss, really. And I'm sorry that it's today. So I hope that he he's with us like with our thoughts and I'm so glad that we can talk about him and I'm sure that he he is with us anyway so thank you very much for mentioning all of that and I have also another again there is many many greetings so I would like not to miss any of them so here are uh, I think that I finished here it, it's again from uh, yeah this I said already uh, yeah, this is also, I said, sorry for that, Sally Price, so that, thank you very much. She was one of my wonderful pupils, amazing, wonderful, fantastic pupil Sally was. Yes, Sally was I remember. and then it's Edith Elit, uh, McRae, McRae. Uh, yeah. yeah, lovely to see you, Daphne, and you look and sound beautiful, fabulous, but it's true, absolutely. Okay. We have again CJ, so that she's... It was lovely to speak to you, Daphne, after so many years. And you have not changed. Right. <laughs> agree. <laughs> Completely agree. Lovely. There is also a help of like the name of your horse, Shadow. And uh, here's also Hanno never saw an elephant during a harp lesson. <laughs> 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 oh, what was never happen can happen you never know you never know yeah. and here we have this. so thank you very much lena also it's lovely to see you too and we Great. have so yeah uh from marisa remember daphne gordon said that i was a russian princess in my previous life <laughs> <laughs> gordon was a, gordon loved to wind people up he loved teasing people <laughs> I think teasing. I think it's teasing Marisa. It's so great. All these memories, you know, it's really so wonderful to bring them out and to bring them like to life and to to refresh them because it's really something what makes our um, life much more richer. And I'm so glad for all of that. And of course, if yeah. you can also 
we will go through the photos which you have sent uh, sent me because here you are again with your beautiful horse oh no that the, these are the one on the left i was very young i was that's a very small pony i think i was riding when i was very young the picture mm -hmm. on the right oh that that was at a pony club show i was borrowing a horse that was a that was a show jumping competition but that was a long 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 time ago my goodness i must have been about 12 years old then or something oh, well. it's good so i wanted to ask you did you do also the competition as you mentioned on the horses as well yeah yes wow wow that's amazing and here you are at the as i can re see this is the college the uh, the royal college of music that that's um sir malcolm sergeant mm -hmm. uh presenting me with the, when I, I won the heart prize for my year when i graduated from the college that was the year i graduated mm -hmm. and sir malcolm sergeant is presenting me with the heart prize which is was a great honor to be presented by by that with that by, by him beautiful beautiful and here's also from your studies probably that no that's a gosh nearly every that's from the international harp week in holland oh wow look that's at them. we have nearly everybody there we have in the second row we have edward witzenberg mm -hmm. a tall tall person is mm -hmm. edward in the row behind that we have um mire Fluor, inga gray or gro from denmark Mm -hmm. um, then we have Maria on the other side of the first harp. We have Maria Koshinska okay. and Thea Berhart. Uh, then I'm not sure. And then we have behind that we have John Sebastian Morley and mm -hmm. his wife. Did you know John Sebastian Morley, who was you know the harp man, yeah, in the country before, and his wife and. John Francis, the flautist, and Millicent mm -hmm. Silver, the harpsichord player, mm -hmm. standing behind Fia Berhut, behind the harp. Um, gosh, I'm away somewhere in the back row. Gosh, nearly every, God, my goodness, I could study that photograph and... <laughs> but it's a beautiful photo. This is really a treasure photo, because we were talking a lot about these harp days in Holland when uh, Fia yeah. Berhut started them and of course it has been no no picture out of that and this is something what came out now thanks to you so i'm very very thankful for that because so as you are also a part of the board of the directors of the harp congress you have been since the very beginning of of these days which has been before pre pre, uh, pre congress festivals so you have been in every of these festivals before as well I went. To, I think. I went. To, I think three, three times to the uh, to the International Harp Week in Holland mm -hmm. at Eindhoven, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think I, the, I went. I think the one, the photograph you've just showed, might have been the last time it was held in Breukelen, and then it was held in Eindhoven. I see. And then the first Harp Congress I went to was in the one in Vienna. Mm -hmm. And then by the time it was in Copenhagen, um, the one in Vienna, I think, was in 1987, I think. Mm -hmm. And I've been to every one since then, except Hong Kong. And mm -hmm. by the time we, we were in Copenhagen, they very kindly made me a member of the board. And it's, I've met so many amazing colleagues through the World Harp Congress and seen so many wonderful places in the world. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't otherwise have seen like Prague and Australia. We had a wonderful congress in Prague. Thanks to you, it must have been a nightmare for you, but it was wonderful it, for us. It was pleasure for me, as I am always so dedicated to the harp and to to. I mean, I, I just want that the harp become really something much more special for everybody. So even this, which was really in the way of nightmare, a lot of work, but still it was yeah. a pleasure and when i see that the people are happy and memory having great memory it makes me even more really pleased and happy that i have done at that time and I've, yes i've attended i don't know was it the was it the fourth 
was Vienna the fourth World Heart Congress or the uh, Vienna was the third. third. It was the third. third yes. So I think everyone, mm -hmm. everyone since then, except as I say Hong Kong, I couldn't manage to get to there. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have gone to the one in Seattle because I was just about three days out of hospital. I'd had oh. two operations for breast cancer. And about three days later, I flew all the way <laughs> to Canada. <laughs> Don't tell me. Oh, my and, goodness. Uh, You're a cascader as one, well. <laughs> the, one, the, one, the one in Vancouver, the one in, in no, the, the, the Vancouver one, mm -hmm. Abzil. And then I shouldn't have gone because I came back and they found that I had a, a lot of blood clots on the lungs. But then I was very pleased about that because I, I came back to have to start chemotherapy. And when I went into hospital to have the chemotherapy started, they mm -hmm. found I had blood clots on the lungs, probably from all the long distance flights immediately after two major operations. So they oh. had to cancel the chemotherapy. And I was very pleased about that. So but, they, oh did radiotherapy. they did radiotherapy instead. And that was all right. That, that fixed things. So oh, I'm fine well, now. Everything is now OK, certainly, because you fantastic so oh thanks god that it's everything but you are really amazing that you you did all this and you risked so much for this long flight my goodness well, i didn't know it was a risk at the time i was only told afterwards when they when they found all the blood clots they said well you shouldn't go on long haul flights after two major operations <laughs> that's Honestly, that's amazing that you have done that. I just can't believe it. And thanks God that everything went fine and that yeah. we can be together now here also. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad. I'm relieved now. Oh my, um, yeah, uh, let's go. <laughs> but, you know, the World Heart Congress, I've been so many parts of the world, as hmm. Australia and um, Vancouver and oh, many, many places. And then some of them, you, you, you used to be able to maybe do a journey, you know, beforehand to see, like when we had the Congress in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was the one in Copenhagen. One was able to visit, I was able to visit Iceland mm -hmm. and Greenland as well. And that, that, was, that was a wonderful experience to go to Greenland and Iceland. And when we had the first one in Seattle, I went on a tour to the Rocky Mountains. Mm -hmm. That was great. It's true that through that we can also have some tours which are arranged or you can do it by yourself and you can go every, anywhere and really find the, not only the harp ward during that week, but yeah. also the the place where you are at that moment. Yeah. yeah. Have you have you played at uh, any of the harp weeks before? Uh, did you perform there? Yes, yes, at, at the Heart Weeks in Holland, I used to, I used to play. Mm -hmm. It was very terrifying to play in front of Maria Koshinska and Vera Dulova and all kinds of people. Oh, here's Beauty coming to say hello. Oh, how cute! Oh, that's lovely. Oh, hey, and he's so kind. He's so kind. He barked yes. such a few oh. times. Oh, how yes. lovely. Does he like yes. also the harp, as my dog does? Yes, she's very happy to hear the harp played. It's lovely. It's beautiful that he's he's with us. What's her name? Beauty. 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 She's a she's a rescue dog. So mm -hmm. I was very lucky when I found her. I think she's very sweet. Oh, that's beautiful. It's clear that you really like the animals. That's so oh. so totally clear now. Yes, I do. We have here also a few other uh, pictures which I would like to share. Uh, here is uh, this one. Yeah, I showed this one already. But here is this one uh, with your. What is it? It's uh, eight. Oh, it's eight that, harps. There is also yes, Marisa that, dress in front. Yeah, that was a celebration of one of Marisa's, and I think was it her, was it her sixtieth birthday concert, or ah. something like that, and. Um, it was with the orchestra, that's at St. John's Smith Square, uh, with the orchestra of St. John's, we played the Handel Concerto for eight harps. Wow. And I'm, um, I'm in, the, in the middle of the back row. Mm -hmm. Again, I've, I've, I've lost my head in this. And, you have uh, 
beautiful blue dress, beautiful long dress. Yeah. And uh, on, I think that Lucy Wakeford is on one side of me and uh, mm -hmm. Sally Price is on the other side. Uh -huh. <coughs> and Emma Granger is now, she, she's, the, she's now the principal harpist at the Royal Opera House. Emma's the person on the far right hand side in the front row. Mm -hmm. Marisa mm -hmm. of course is in the center. Yay Ann Jones is next to her. And um no that that was great. We had um we had a wonderful evening with uh, eight of us, Marisa and seven of her of her star pupils. That's that wonderful. Lovely. All this this community in uh, England, it's really great mm -hmm. how you are really close and that you can really always support each other. It's so wonderful. Honestly, it's really beautiful. It's and um, with the um, talking of the Handel Concerto, the very first time I went to the Israel competition mm -hmm. when Lucy Wakeford was 16 and she was playing and she won the second prize. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a tradition then that they get the jury and the guests of honor to play the Handel Concerto at the opening concert. And um, at first I went there, they, the idea was to have 25 harpists playing the Handel Concerto. And I'd arrived on a night flight, I arrived about five o'clock in the morning or something, and I had a couple of hours sleep, went to um, breakfast, and Esther Hurlitz, who was a, a great lady, she came up to me at breakfast. She said, oh, I understand you're very good at tuning harps. I said, no, 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 I'm not. I'm not good at tuning at all. And she said, oh, yes, I understand that you're very good at tuning. Would you like to go, please, with Judith Lieber to the concert hall and tune the 25 harps for the Handel Concerto? And I said, no, I wouldn't like to. But Esther oh. Hurlitz, if she asked you to do something, you had to do it. So and Esther... I have just to say that at that time there were no tuners, so you have to do it by ears. <laughs> and um, so we did that. And then for the cons for the, the heart that I was given, it was a nice Lyle and Healy, smallish, smallish Lyle and Healy, not a gold one. And I played it, it was very, very nice. And then I was told afterwards that this harp had belonged to Harper Marx. Oh, I was no. a devoted fan of the Marx brothers. And especially Harpo Marx, I thought he was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And when he died, he left this harp to a music academy in Israel. So I found afterwards that I'd had the tremendous honor and pleasure of playing a harp that had belonged to Harpo Marx. And that was a very, very big thrill. That's great because we had already Julia Rominski at the uh, interview and she was also telling about this harp already. So I knew oh. it a little bit, but it's fantastic that again it crossed together this, this memories yes. of that harp via you as well. Hmm. Fantastic. So That's really and, beautiful. And then since then I've had the honor of being twice on the on the jury of the Israel competition which is a, a great honor. I think, um, I know I've got a picture of, of one of the, the first time I was on the jury, we have a picture of the whole jury. I think, is and, it uh, one when it's also Fia and there is also uh, Mr. Harris? No, that, 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 that's a picture that was taken in Cardiff at the, the, Cardiff, yeah. uh, the Cardiff World Heart Festival, which Marisa organized. I see, um, it's Marisa. Marisa is the second from the left, mm -hmm. then Esther Hurlitz, mm -hmm. then Fia Berhart, mm -hmm. then Naoko Yoshino, mm -hmm. then Nicanor Zabaleta, and then me. What a, so, what an a company, what a group of people. It's yes. really fantastic. Yes, it's lovely to see some of these pictures of really, really famous names in the harp. Absolutely, it's really fantastic. And here is also here um, you are with the pop. Yes, that's my my parents. Um, they had they had the honor of painting the only pope, the only uh, portrait that Pius the Twelfth ever sat for. It's an enormous portrait. It's three oh. meters high and two oh. meters wide. Wow! And you can just see, and that's the day it was 
presented because my parents had had many, many visits to Rome with sittings mm. for the, with the Pope. And then the day it was presented and, you know, we had to, everybody had to be properly dressed in those days to see the heart. Married women had to be in black yes. with a black veil and younger mm. unmarried women had to be in white with a white veil. Mm -hmm. and my father was in mourning dress. And that was the day it was, um, I don't, we, we can't see very much of the, well, you can see about half of the portrait, but it's enormous, it's three meters high. It now hangs in the Vatican. And that was, a, that was an extraordinary experience because, you know, that, that portrait must have, the painting of that must have lasted about two years because they were going backwards and forwards to Rome. They were painting the Queen at the same time. So to try to fit in the fittings that the Queen could do in her diary and the Pope mm -hmm. could do in his diary it was all very, very, <laughs> it was a lot of organization. That's fantastic. Have you been uh, present when your parents were painting it or it was not allowed, no. it was forbidden for you to, to watch it? Uh, yes, I was present at a few, at a few of the private audiences. But um, my, my parents and my father, because the first time, because in those days, for a private audience, a man had to be completely dressed, you know, white tie, tails, mm -hmm. full evening dress. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you're painting, you know, you don't want to be in a white tie and tails and with paintbrushes and things. So he started <laughs> off like that. Then he spoke to some people and he got it down to a dinner jacket and a black tie. Mm -hmm. Then he, a few sittings later, he got it down to a, a lounge suit. And then by the time they were in Castel Gandolfo in the summer residence, my father was just allowed to wear a, an artist's smock. Mm -hmm. So it <laughs> completely changed the, the protocol <laughs> at the Vatican. That's, cool. That's lovely. And so here... I have to stand up to the, the Pope. It was very difficult. We were also in the operatic world there. Mm -hmm. And the operatic world in Rome is very late. The operas start at nine, go on to about one in the morning. And right. then you go to dinner. Yeah. And the, the Vatican works very early. The Pope often wanted to sit at eight o'clock in the morning. So my poor father would have to turn out in white tie and tails, full evening dress, be in the Vatican at eight in the morning, <laughs> having been at the opera and having dinner till about three in the morning. It was very difficult. Oh, that's tough. That's really tough. Here we have also a picture. You were playing in some hospitals, as I can see. Oh yes, that, that was in Scotland. I was I was giving a recital at the Edinburgh Festival uh -huh. and I had a very dear friend who was in a, a hospice in Glasgow, a very, very old lady. I um, so I said, would it, would the hospice like me to, to go there, to go to drive over to Glasgow and mm -hmm. give a recital for the people in the hospice? Mm -hmm. And the newspaper, the Scotsman editor heard about this and he sent a photographer over. I didn't know about this, but he sent a photographer over to take some pictures of me playing to the hospice. As you can see, there's a there's a nun there. Yes. And this very old lady, very, very dear to me. And we were playing to, you know, lots of other patients in the hospice. It was a nice experience. It looks like from the movie, it's really something so, so special. So really very special. It's beautiful. Yeah. I have here a wonderful message from Anna Verkul Hanseva, which I would like to share with you, that uh, she remembers all your support when she was uh, during her first visit in London. So oh, that's nice of her. I it's haven't so seen Anna for a long time. <laughs> she, she's, she's a fantastic harpist. Absolutely, absolutely. Very, very fantastic. And here's also from Veronica Lemyshenko that she only mentioned about your dog, that how beautiful and lovely she is. <laughs> <laughs> and here's also a message from Anna, Ber uh, Anna Bratjelevich. She's uh, my assistant of the Harp channel and she's also watching today. So it's lovely of being oh, with you. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, let's go back to the pictures because they are so beautiful. I, when I was uploading them, I was just like impressed by everything what you could have shared with us. And I'm so happy 
also to share. This is from Israel. Probably this is the group of uh, the jury which you were mentioning. Yes. Probably we have Esther Hurley is on the far left. Yeah, and then gosh, and it's Judith Lieber in the green sweater uh -huh. next to her, Alice Giles. I'm next to Alice. Uh, I'm not. I should know who's in the red jacket, but I see um, not uh, Natalia Shamieva. Yes, is mm -hmm. third from the right. I recognise her. Indeed, indeed. Um, and I don't. I don't know who the who the gentleman is. I'm not sure. It's not. It's not uh, uh, Joseph Molnar. Maybe. Maybe oh, is. Yes. Yes, you're right. Yes, I think it's mm -hmm. Joseph Molnar. Mm -hmm. Oh, how really lovely. And it, when it was this, if you remember the year, when was this competition? Uh, I'm not certain. I can't remember the exact year, but it was, it was well, it was, you know, we held all the early rounds in Jerusalem. And then they had the semi-final and uh, the final, we went to Tel Aviv mm -hmm. for the final concert. Yeah, that, that was these days when uh, they could have even the final comp final re uh, stage was with the Israel Philharmonic as well. Yes, so it's, yes. yes. Mm. Great. Indeed. Here is also a picture with our lovely Victor Salvi. Uh, yes, the, the one on the right is, um, I, I suggested that the college should honour Victor with a, with a special a special degree to make him an honorary uh -huh. uh, F on RAM, and uh, that was presented to him by Prince Charles, oh. and I had the, uh, and then it's a it's a big, big ceremony that day, and I had the honour of reading out the citation mm -hmm. for Victor to Prince Charles, and the whole you know, it was a big audience, and every recipient of the honours get a citation read out, and I had the honour of being asked to write read out the citation for Victor. And then Victor was presented to Prince Charles and got his special honour. Oh. And then the picture on the right is uh, in the Salvi showroom after the end of a, a concert. I had a, the junior department gave a lovely, lovely concert. Um, again, it was an ensemble concert. Well, we had con an ensemble mm -hmm. of six, I think, or eight, um, and solos. And we had that nice picture of Victor and me at the end of it. That's Miss good. Victor, very. He was such a wonderful, he was, wonderful supporter of harp. Absolutely, he was really living for the instrument. He was really, yeah. absolutely wanted to have the the best out of it. He was really yes. magnificent. And, and, and I was so so pleased that the college saw fit, you know, to give him a special honor, mm -hmm. a special honorary degree for all the work he'd done for the harp. He deserves. Absolutely deserves. And here is also a group, beautiful group of people huh. with Judy Loman. Oh, that, that that's the um, the jury in Moscow, mm -hmm. the Moscow competition. And there's Mario Falco, and then mm -hmm. Judy Loman, and then Bertil Fournier, mm -hmm. and me. Yes. And we were the we were the foreign jurors, and we sat on one side of the hall. And then there were the Russian jurors, and they sat on the other side of the hall. So we were very, very much separated. Oh my! Russian jurors, the foreign jurors. <laughs> and here's here are your dogs as well. Uh, these are two of my lovely dogs. Mm. They're they're no more. They were the they were Beauty's predecessors. Ra I called them Rascal and Mischief. They were litter sisters oh. out in the garden here. They were wonderful dogs. It's black and, and white. Mischief, in... <laughs> uh, mischief is a tricolor. She's she's a mm -hmm. black and white and tan. And mm -hmm. Rascal was um, called an orange roan. She was orange mm -hmm. and white. Mm -hmm. and mischief, the one on the right, she lived to be 16 years old, which was a very oh, good wow. age for Spanish. That's wonderful. But if they grow together, it must have been very sad for one to lose the other one, right? I thought she'd be heartbroken, but um, mm. she didn't. She just seemed to get on with it. Yeah. 
I, I thought she'd pine terribly because they'd never been apart. Mm. Mm. But no, she 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 got on all right. <laughs> that's so. that's relief. That's relief. Here is also one picture. This oh, is yeah. a. Uh, I just only was trying to search on the internet. This is a picture. Uh, wait a minute. I was looking for it. Tell me a little story about it. That's a, uh, that's a portrait that Henry Carr, with an RA, he painted of me when I was very young, and mm -hmm. I'm playing my lovely French Erard. Um, he he wanted to have a. He was a Royal Academician, and he wanted to have a picture to put into the Royal Academy summer exhibition. Mm -hmm. And um, he asked me if I would sit for a portrait. And I did. Uh, but it's, it's a big, big, big portrait. You know, it, it's life size. It's well over two meters <gasps> big. So and it, it, it looked wonderful in the um, in the Royal Academy. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't mean the Royal Academy of Music, you know, I mean the Royal Academy of Arts in mm -hmm. the summer exhibition. And um, it looked wonderful there when you could see it at the end of a whole gallery. Uh, then it, my parents had it, they had it in our big house in Kensington, but it it looked, and then when we moved up to this house, there was no way I couldn't even have got it through the front door. So, so you don't I have it at home? No, I donated it to the Royal College of Music. Oh. It <laughs> but is it yours? It somewhere in the basement. There. But is it your yes. picture? Is it your yeah. picture? Yeah. Like not only that it's yes, you, my picture. but it's it in your own. Yes. Yeah, that's lovely. It's, it's my own name, but the college, the college have it. The same with my parents painted a wonderful, wonderful portrait of Tito Gobi mm -hmm. um, as 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 Scarpia in Tosca, and mm -hmm. they copied that for themselves. And that portrait was all over the world, being in exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And um, then when we moved out of the fantastic studio in Kensington up to this house, uh, again, it wouldn't have come through the front door. So we had to get rid of it. We didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And my mother had the bright idea, well, let's give it to the Royal College. They can hang it in the uh, Opera Theatre. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, have you seen the Opera Theatre at the Royal College? Yes, yes. They were very, very lovely. And on the staircase down to that, mm -hmm. uh, this portrait of Tito Gobi is, is hanging. That's all, that also belongs to me, but the college have it. <laughs> but it's wonderful that you can share it with the, with the people like this publicly. It's so fantastic. Yeah. Here's also another picture. Oh, that's, um, that's a, another portrait by Paul Wyeth. Mm -hmm. My parents and my mother painted several portraits of me, but never playing the harp. Um, that one is by Paul Wyeth. That that smaller that hangs in my music room. I mm -hmm. like that portrait very much. It's um, quite impressionistic. It's I like it a lot. Absolutely. Yes. And the reason that your mother has not not painted your uh, your picture with the harp was it the reason of that she did not have time or just by coincidence it has not happened? Mainly, well, I think it just didn't happen. I think she was always too busy. She painted several portraits of me very young. Mm -hmm. uh, she painted me as a doing my homework mm -hmm. from school in a school uniform, doing my homework. Mm -hmm. And then she wanted to paint me again for an exhibition. And um, then I said, no, I said, I will only sit for you if you paint the dog as well. <laughs> so, I was black painting her. And uh, so she painted a portrait of me in, a, in my riding gear with my riding hat mm -hmm. and holding my dog. Oh. And I, think I, was about, I don't know how old I was there, about 10, 10, 11 years old, but I absolutely refused. I said, no, I will not sit for another portrait unless you paint my dog. Sally's got to be in the picture. Oh, that's so, so touching. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> that was just blackmail. <laughs> that's wonderful. I have your picture also of that harp which you were mentioning. This is the oh, yes. harp. This is Tito Gobi's harp, but it's mine now, because he left mm -hmm. it to me in his will. But this is the harp that Tito Gobi had, which was the um, harp at the Rome Opera House. It's a beautiful, beautiful French Erard. Mm -hmm. It's in lovely condition. They had to have a new neck a couple of years ago. 
Uh -huh. But it's in, in lovely condition. The harps are so beautiful. They were really so wonderful, these harps. They sounded so beautifully. They were very fragile, but they were really absolutely sounding un untouchable. Like that's not possible that it can be repeated. Yeah, it's it's something very special in this instrument. Yes, I'm very lucky. I have two beautiful French Erards. Mm -hmm. And um, my very first harp was a, an Erat Grecian. Mm -hmm. Very old, it must be about 1820, 1830. That uh -huh. was my first instrument. I still have that, it's got mm -hmm. a lovely sound, it's mm -hmm. quite fragile. Then I also have a, I bought at one point that I saw it advertised, I bought an English, uh, era, a Grecian Erard, which mm -hmm. is a very, very nice Erard, it's better than the Erat. Mm -hmm. And then these two beautiful French Gothic Erards. Mm -hmm. And I have my two line and my two line at Healy's, which are beautiful hearts. And it reminds me, yeah, it uh, reminds me that in, in England you had also very famous Mark uh, Morley. Did you have ever the harp of Morley? Yes, I've got I have a Morley harp. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an unusual, it's a 48 string harp. It has mm -hmm. a top A, which I don't think the top A is probably ever played. No. I don't think there are any other harps. No. 48 strings. No. It's a lovely harp. It has a beautiful sound. Very, very, but it's an, it's an old one. It must date from about 12, 1912, mm -hmm. 1913, something like that. I, I tried, when I was little, I played on the Morley harp, and I only remember that it had much bigger distance between the strings as usual harps yeah. it was having much yeah. wider like like a Holmgacher in these days so yeah. it was really much wider mm -hmm. yes. but i like very much i like that harp as well yeah. yeah they have a lovely sound yeah indeed indeed i just want to again share some of the messages because we have also again from sally price you were always greatest, great, greeted first by Daphne's dog. Then you went to her house for a lesson. Beautiful dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... So, that's lovely. And here's from classical Kashmir. Kash 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 we are loving oh, all the stories, Daphne. We have learned so much more about you now. Daphne loves her dogs. <laughs> and I think... I think this is the harp I play when you teach me at your home, Daphne. It is spe spectacular. Jamal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. And yeah. here also it's written about the Molly harps. Also had the columns made of English oak. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really interesting also to to get uh, to know all these informations because uh, these harps are somehow not forgotten, but they are not used now to be played. So it's really also nice to know some of the here. Also, it's another just one more. They had a unique brass action plate which had the tuning pins through the plate, oh, yes. so the neck did oh. not twist. Yes, yes, because the tuning the metal plate went right up to the top, mm -hmm. and the tuning pins. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten about that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes it's Geraldine's absolutely right. right. Thank you very much for this information. I also, because I was searching for some photos to have even more from the beauties of yours, and I have been very lucky that Marisa was so great to post many of your photos as well. Oh, so I have, I have found these historical photos also with Marisa during the dinner. Where you both oh, are yes. there on the table, and That's my father, um, my father next to Marisa. Uh huh. I think probably Marisa's father next to me on the right, I and see. my mother next to that. And then it, then I think in the next to my mother, to my father must be Marisa's mother. Uh huh. I think oh. uh, it's the six. Yes, it must be Marisa. On the right, must, on the left, it must be Marisa, my father, Marisa's mother, and mm. on the right, me and Marisa's father and my mother. That's wonderful. Oh, goodness. 
I know that Marisa was really talking so nicely about you, about your family. So it is clear that you were really very close by, that you, you could have had also such a beautiful time together. So that's a proof again by the photos here. And here's also another photo of you. And then I can recognize now your father and the father of Marisa as well, and your mother. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, um, that has to be... That has to be Marisa's first husband, I think. So the first husband then, not the father, okay. No, that's not her father. I think, well, I'm not sure. I. It must be my mother who's sitting next to Marisa. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it must be. I don't really recognize her. I suppose it must be. Uh -huh. and I think the gentleman sitting next to my father must be Marisa's first husband. Mm -hmm. Because here on the oh, first photo, probably then it's also the the husband like, next to you, probably her husband. No, that, no that, I think that's her father. Yeah, really, because they look very like. No, no, they don't like. They don't look like. <laughs> very I'm not true. Sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, but it's really nice to have these these memories. And here I found a, also a picture of you with your student. Oh, I think that's with, yes, with Cecilia, my wonderful student, Cecilia Sultana de Maria. Uh -huh. she's, she's a fantastic student. Or she's yeah. not my student any longer. She's a professional mm -hmm. now. Yes. No, she, she's lovely. And here's also a picture of you presenting something. Maybe you remember what is it? Oh, that's at, that's at one of the World Harp Congresses. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that, was that, in, that was in Sydney, I think. Uh huh. Yes, I think that it were, is. Were you, were you at the Congress in Sydney? Because all the all the focus on youth concerts there were held in a church. Right. Right. I think that I think that I Congress yeah. in Sydney. Uh huh. Uh huh. I bet so because also here is the picture, which I oh. found on the internet. This is also oh, in Australia, right? Yes, that was when I took a, I took a day off and went, went on a sightseeing tour in the mountains. Uh huh. Wonderful, wonderful in the in the, in the in the mountains. It was fantastic, mm -hmm. really fantastic. The the nature in Australia is just like I I was impressed. I thought that it's not possible that something like that still exists in the airs. That it's so mm -hmm. untouchable nature. So. So yeah. pure. So something what I was when I was flying, I just saw from the plane and I said, like, this is not possible. That is it really exists something like that. So I can imagine your expression of that. It's so well, so you, you need to, go to Africa then. Oh goodness. Yeah. Yes, that must have been because I was presenting the for many years I was the um chair of the Focus on Youth Advisory mm -hmm. Committee. And I yes. was presenting the Focus on Youth Concerts. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. that, that, that must be in Sydney. It probably. And here's also uh, from with your students and with Marisa. Oh, yes. This is probably also at the, I feel like it's from the Royal College, the place. And here's you again, like like uh, we have seen already in your special suit. Oh, that, that was a great honor because I was, had the honor of being made a fellow of the college. Uh -huh. it, it's a very special honor. But <clears throat> before your before the ceremony and before you're presented with your fellowship by the prince, you're asked to sign the special fellowship book. And the very first signature in that book is Sir Edward Elgar. Uh-huh. And but then all of he was the first fellow of the Royal College. And then you they go on from there so it's in wonder, wonderful honor to, to sign the book that starts off with sir edward elgar and then you're asked to sign this book so. it's fantastic and between we, we got a message from marissa about the picture which we were talking about yes daphne that's clyde my first husband uh, and father on my first child son john he's the reason that i left spain when i was 23. <laughs> That's all of this. And uh, here's also written, it was a masterclass at the Purcell uh, School. 
Oh. So okay. it's nice to to also see the people they recognize the pictures. Here's also yes. a picture of your of your uh, not CD but it was the recording the LP the yes. LP recording. And uh, how many recordings did you do? I've done a few, but not not anything very special. Because it's of I, course this is so beautiful. It's so beautiful, and the repertoire is really. Is it possible still to get it somewhere? Do you have at home these recordings? I don't, I don't know if I have. I think it's probably probably long forgotten. Oh no 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 no! It should not be forgotten. It should be found. And if we, you don't have it, anybody who watches us now that and have it, it would be wonderful if you can share it with us because it would be great to to have these recordings. And of course, uh, I'm sure that Daphne would be happy also to to get this uh, a little bit more alive so that we can of course have this great great performer here heard so that we can see also the recordings and Daphne I found this and I really have no idea if it belongs to you or is it you no is it not you so then I I apologize because when I was searching for the photos of you on the internet it appeared this one so I thought if it's not you when you were a child no I have no idea who that is Okay, so then I'm sorry, it has been a mistake, but I of course could not know if it's not you because I, I could not recognize. And here I found also this picture with the harp. Is it uh, your first harp or is it uh, something from which which you have still at home? I don't know, so I've lost my head in that picture, so I have no idea. Because it's also... That, that, that looks like my... Art. That looks like my Erat Grecian, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I just thought mm -hmm. maybe this is the harp uh, I, I started on, this very little harp. So I had yes. it also with my mom, I had it at home. So that's why I thought maybe it could have been yes. your very first harp. Yes, that, that looks like, that, that, that must be my Erat Grecian harp, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so that and I have also of course found the pictures when we were together at the competition so that here is of course the, the jury in Israel when we were applauding for the finalist already oh. with, for announcing the prize winners yes. and here's the picture I already showed when we were sitting in the jury yes. and uh, I here it is also the the group of people. Yes. The... You remember and... we were locked into a sort of bomb-proof shelter underneath the theatre. <laughs> the the jury was completely bomb-proof, they said. I know, I know, I know. Okay. Okay. But it's a beautiful place to be. It's really nice. Oh, yes. And the early rounds held in that beautiful Crusaders castle. Absolutely. And the really lovely beautiful beautiful place yeah well you yes. know marissa just wrote a message probably come to this the, to this picture which i was asking who was it so that was a teacher of marissa wow yeah, that's her aunt. That's louisa, her. louisa Nargis was louisa was marissa's aunt mm -hmm. who was her teacher mm -hmm. goodness that's wonderful wonderful mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and here's also come to to your recording. It must not be forgotten. We would love to hear your recordings, Daphne. So certainly, it's not only him and only them, but also all of us. We would love to. Uh, and also, I have one more, not one, but I have some small more pictures because I found also when I was in London, and I found this picture when we were having dinner. So I was oh, very. Yeah find it marisa with Ryan jones as well yes marisa's yes. husband is there yes that was after after your recital at, at the college indeed a, indeed a lovely indeed. evening yes sure. and he's also mm -hmm. when i was giving the master class during the time when i had the recital there wow. yes so it's really yeah. beautiful beautiful place to be and here's when I started to teach so you were greeting me like this with the students my first college class <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 
really lovely. And here I have also one personal picture together with you at the competition when we were there as the jury's member. In Israel, yes. <laughs> so I just found out all of that and I was trying to really search as much as I could. So this was what I have found, everything. And Daphne, tell me, how do you deal with this time now during the pandemic? Have you enjoyed it to be at home and just uh, how did it work? Because of course we had we had taught online that we all know. And uh, well, how did you deal with all of that? When this started, I had no idea how to use a computer, really. I was so bad with a computer. My wonderful pupil, Daniel, showed me how to try. He tried to get me organized to be able to teach online, uh, which is all right. I mean, it's okay, but it's very frustrating because the sound quality is so bad mm. and it, it keeps cutting out and freezing mm. and you can't judge dynamics or anything. Mm. But my garden has never had so much attention, probably. And my dog likes having me at home all the time. Mm. And um, yes, I mean, it, I'll be very pleased when it's over, I think, and we get back to teaching people face to face because it's very, it is very frustrating. How do you find it teaching online? Is it yeah, frustrating? For I, I must say, I was really worried all the time before, but when it had no be and other chance than to teach, I found that it's it's possible and it's of course it depends on the connection it's really always the internet connection is the matter yeah. of of the, of the way how it's it's possible to work but honestly it's better than nothing it's certainly better than nothing so yeah. i was pleased that this technology exists that we can still continue mm -hmm. and as i had the faculty class now on tuesday i uh, was uh, um, uh, the, the students already told me that they have the access to royal college now so that's really great Yes, yes. So it's they can opening go in, practice one one person in a in a mm -hmm. room in a certain room, mm -hmm. and then from July they are saying that a, a professor can go in for certain rooms, right, right, one to one, person, but you know you have to have distancing, right, right. So, so hopefully in September we get back there. We let's hope, yeah. Let's hope that everything will be will be fine. And you will spend your summer at home, or are you going to travel to some some uh, countryside? How does no, it look? Stay, stay at home, I think. If I can't go to Kenya or mm -hmm. something, I think I'll just stay at home. And Kenya is completely shut off at the moment. You can't you can't travel there. Mm -hmm. So um, no, I shall stay at home and be with beauty and work in the garden, I <laughs> think. That's, That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And are you having now uh, also some hobbies? Are you reading or what is your hobby now? Mm, I read quite a lot. I enjoy reading. I'm, been, I'm trying to catalogue my parents because there's no you know, complete catalogue of, of all their work. Mm -hmm. and I'm working, photographs exist of most of the portraits that they did. Boston mm -hmm. University in the States mm -hmm. is very anxious to take, to get archive material. And I'm trying to, you know, amass all the photographs I can identify. Mm -hmm. It's easy to identify pictures of the Queen and the Pope, but that's not a problem. But, you know, so many businessmen mm -hmm. and so many people that, I'm not always certain of the name. So I'd like to see if I can get a, a complete catalogue of all their work. That's fantastic. Um, mm, that's fantastic. Like you know, I've, I've got up to about 300 and something of wow. pictures in my father's name, but my mother painted more than 50% of that. And wow. then about, my mother also painted, painted in her own name. So I've got up to about 150 of the portraits she painted in her own name. So there's so many portraits that they painted between them, but they, they, they worked as a partnership all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's really a treasure. I would, like, I would like to try and get that done, but it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult to, you know, to do, to trace a lot of the, of the material. Yeah. 
it's also to search for it. It's it must be very difficult, but it will be amazing treasure if it's possible to be done. This kind of yes, the Boston University in, mm -hmm. in Massachusetts. They're they're interested in trying to have a mm -hmm. an archive collection of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and, you know, only just to be sure, I know that you said that uh, your parents has never made a portrait of you playing the harp, but did they ever painted the harp? No. No. What an interesting information because, of course, for every painter, the harp looks very, very artistic, you know, so that they want to paint it. It's very interesting. I don't, I don't, I don't think, no, I don't think they've ever drawn or painted. No, that's a point. No, I, I don't, I don't think so. Never. What a pity. <laughs> what a pity. Yes. <laughs> But certainly, all what they have left here for a treasure from from all these portraits, as we were talking about from the royal family and all these popes, and of course, uh, it's amazing treasure. It's amazing treasure. Yeah. And my mother painted a nice portrait of Marisa Robles, but she was not not playing the harp, just, just mm -hmm. the head and shoulders. I think and, that uh, probably the portrait Marisa has be, be, uh, above the fire place in her yeah, house that, yes in a that's spanish what, mantilla indeed that's 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 like really the exact spanish style of marisa yes. yeah it's this a beautiful beautiful. portrait absolutely she's, it's not, beautiful. she's not she's not playing the harp <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's really beautiful portrait and um, daphne i just want to really ask you do you have any wish which you would like still to, that happens to your life and that you, or maybe a wish for the people or whatever it's in your mind, like a dream? Mm, I don't know. I suppose I just want to go on having the pleasure of teaching lovely gifted pupils and continue doing that as long as I can and traveling to Kenya and seeing elephants. And maybe going to other places I haven't been yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That I wish really that happens to you, that you can really see all these places also, which you wish to see, that you can see your your wild animals, which you love so much, and that you can yes. still enjoy this beautiful beauty of the nature and all your, your dreams that comes through. And of course, I'm so proud to be your colleague and so happy that you had time today to be with us. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you in in nature, like it, in reality, so that we will be able to, to really meet soon in London. And I wish you, Daphne, all my best from my heart and have a wonderful summer. Take care of yourself, a lot of health, I'm so glad to hear all this, what has happened, that it's in the in the history, that it's already now covered everything, that you are healthy and that you can just share all what you are doing with everybody. I thank you so much, Daphne, for everything you have done, you are doing and you will do for us. And I wish you all my best. Well, thank you very much for giving me the honor of being interviewed. Really appreciate that. And hope to see you in the flesh in the college in September. Yeah, Lots me of love. too. Thank you. Me thank you very much. I thank you. I thank to everybody who was with us. And I thank for beautiful messages, for being really like active with us. I, I really appreciate it. I am so honored. We had such a wonderful guest, Daphne Bodden, today with us. And I'm looking forward to see you on Saturday again with another guest. And I will, of course, see you then at five o'clock on Saturday. I'm looking forward. Have a great evening, morning wherever you are, and I'm happy that you are with us. Thank you, Daphne. My big kiss and have a great evening. Bye-bye, dear. Bye-bye. <laughs>